I didn't scare anybody. We got serious business going on here, though. We've got firearms to talk about. We got years to talk about and dates, as in 1954. So, yep, I'm Hickok 45, and I'm glad y'all came by. It's a great day. Got firearms to shoot, and you're here, so it doesn't get any better than that, does it? <laughs> yes, 1954 was a big year, and we're going to talk about that year because uh, many of you were around in 1954, and many of you were not, right? <laughs> so we got three firearms of choice. Uh, you all know the drill, the armed in videos. We picked three videos or three firearms from a certain time period as samples that somebody, some human, like you or me, might have chosen for their three gun battery, their shotgun, their handgun, and their rifle. Not that these are the best choices, not that they're the only choices, of course, but three possible choices of 1954. Okay, so what were you carrying and what firearms were you uh, packing in 1954? Hmm? You remember that far back? Those who were born in 1980 probably don't remember that far back. Well, these are three possible choices. And, uh, you know, <laughs> which one do you want me to talk about first? Well, first, we've got a Model 70. We've got a Model 10, 38 Special. And we've got a double barrel shotgun. This happens to be a Stoger. But just a sampling of the type of shotgun someone might have chosen. There were several. Ithaca, could have been Winchester, lots of different brands. Remington, I believe, had a double, you know, hammerless like that, at least without exposed hammers. So, uh, why don't we start with a shotgun? You want to? Shotguns are so much fun. So, you might be thinking, no, 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 I'd have chosen uh, if I was around then, a uh, Model 97, a Model 12, uh, an 870, and all those sorts of things, and a lot of people would have. But then, a lot of people still, even today, but in 54, still were uh, partial to a good old uh, double barrel shotgun, kind of like, a, you know, in a way, a revolver maybe. It, they just knew it would work, put two shells in. It's two shots you definitely can count on, and you can load it up again pretty quickly if you want to, right? And so it was uh, hard to beat. <laughs> Woo, blow that target up. So you're just a good choice. Good old double barrel shotgun. Can't go wrong with it, really. And uh, before I shoot it anymore, though, I want to thank uh, Silencer Central, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Great supporter of the channel. You can go there and learn everything you want to know about silencers, suppressors. And they'll help walk you right through it and take care of all the paperwork. And when it's approved, they'll send it to you. So check them out. We really appreciate their help on the channel. And I don't think I could put a suppressor on that. Well, yeah, actually, actually they make it for shotguns now, don't they? <laughs> so a shotgun, a double barrel would have been a good choice. And again, uh, 54 probably sounds like a long, long, long time ago to many of you all, doesn't it? I mean, uh, it sort of is for me, uh, and especially if you were not alive, it's like talking about the 1920s maybe, or the 1850s or, or something like that. Well, you know, it just so happens, you might wonder why the crazy man rolled up in a, some kind of old car. Uh, well, the reason is, let's go here and take a look. This old car was made in 1954. So this is, uh, you know, I like to share a few facts about the time period. So uh, John and I looked around and we thought we'd buy a car for the video just to have something, uh, you know, tangible, you know, to illustrate 1954. This is a Chrysler New Yorker. Sure is. It's a really neat old car. <laughs> It's a beauty. It has a, uh, as John has instructed me, it has a 331 Hemi firepower, okay, in it. It's a standard model, and uh, it's even the same model Howard Hughes uh, owned. He did all kinds of things to his, I think, to get the air purifier going and all that. He was a bit of a germaphobe, uh, but uh, like me, I just eat certain kinds of dirt, you know, other dirt I won't eat because I'm a germaphobe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's an interesting old car, and it was made in 54. So, looks like it, doesn't it? Looks kind of like 1954. So, uh, I actually bought my first car, it was a 55 Pontiac. So I'm very familiar with that time period. 
Now, I didn't buy it in 55. It was about yeah, 10, 12 years later. But uh, so anyway, 54. Uh, what else in 1954? Besides people buying double barrel shotguns, revolvers, and uh, bolt action rifles, and other things. Uh, it was the year Marilyn Monroe married Joe DiMaggio. Did you know that? Gasoline was 22 cents a gallon, I read. Uh, what else? Eisenhower was president. I remember that quite well. Dwight D. Eisenhower. Oh gosh, what else? Uh, 1954. There was, oh yeah, John, John Travolta was born that year, and so was Condoleezza Wright, Rice, excuse me, Rice, Condoleezza Rice. And uh, it was just, uh, you know, it hadn't been all that long since the uh, World War II, when you get right down to it, you know, because I was so young in the 50s, it, I, I had no, obviously, memory of, <laughs> of, the, of the World War II, but in looking back on it, and my parents and, you know, the army memorabilia around, because they were both in the military. Uh, and, you know, dad was overseas, I've talked about that, and uh, uh, dad's other, John's other grandpa too. But, uh, but dad was in the European theater and, and uh, was at, you know, D-Day and everything. And, and you know, as a dumb kid, I had no concept that that was really just eight or nine years ago, five, six, seven years ago, you know, 10 years ago which even then would have seemed like an eternity, right? But you know, now I'd realize 10 years is nothing. We've been doing this for longer than 10 years. So anyway, uh, it was an interesting uh, year. And let's look at the guns again. Uh, like I said, we just went and bought that old car for the video. Nah, that's John's. You know, you can't believe half of what I tell you, can you? Especially about firearms. So anyway, the shotgun, the double barrel shotgun would have been a viable choice. Many of you would disagree, of course. You'd say, why would you want that? Uh, it's and, and in some ways it, it depends on your experience with firearms. Uh, ironically, I tell you what, uh, you know Jeff Cooper. If you don't know who he is, that tells us something about you too. <laughs> but Jeff Cooper was uh, a bit of an advocate of a double barrel shotgun. Yeah, I mean reliable, works quick to load. If you need more than a couple of rounds of 12 gauge, you, what are you involved? In? You know, I mean he he uh, he didn't necessarily advocate it over everything else, but. What I was getting at is that sometimes something simpler and with less capacity is actually the firearm a professional might recommend over something that has a lot of bullets, a lot of ammo, you know, so, uh, so you don't want to make too much fun of that. And if you're young and you're just now learning about firearms, you might think, this is totally stupid. There's a pump shotgun available, but if I hold five or six rounds, why would anybody want one of these, you know? Not necessarily the case. Uh, so, don't get caught up on capacity because, man, these things work. Can I shoot one more time before I uh, move on to these other fine firearms? So, it's 1954 now, remember? Okay, make sure you hadn't forgotten. I wonder if they'll reach out with birdshot down there to that uh, orange two liter. <laughs> I think it did, didn't it? <laughs> or that plate. Yeah, hit it pretty hard. That's a preferred piece, too. Don't make fun of birdshot too much, okay? So yeah, a good old double barrel shotgun was uh, this hypothetical human's choice for uh, 1954. And then, and you know, they've been around, of course, even without the hammers, exposed hammers since back in the 1800s. So everybody's familiar with them, how they work. They're all basically, you know, the same operation, manual of operation. And then uh, let's go to the handgun. Uh, good old revolver. That's not too big a surprise, is it, that a person might choose a 38 Special in 1954. One of the most popular uh, chamberings cartridges on planet Earth. You know, there's no doubt about it. And then one of the most popular handguns on planet Earth through all of the 1900s was the Model 10. Right here, you know, or the, you know, they called the M&P, called the, what, what else was the, uh, hand ejector model I think they called her initially and everything else yeah they didn't get really model get model names until 1957 I think so whoever chose this gun in 1954 uh, would not have called it a model 10 he would not have known even known nobody would have known that this was a model 10 because it was not a model 10 yet it was just a K frame M&P hand ejectors you know Smith and Wesson 38 special 
because uh, that was 1957, I think, they started using the model names on the things. And, and this is one, this was made in this very gun, in, I think 53 or two or something like that. So it does not have a model number name on it. It doesn't have model 10 on it, so I'm trying to say. It's pinned and recessed and all that. So this would have been a pretty good choice. Let's shoot the dumb thing. How about that? Get some ammo. You know, again, six shots, you know. We think, how lame can that be? And even, and again, these old round nose lead bullets, that's that was what they carried back then too. It didn't have all these fancy hollow points and that kind of thing. You know, really in the 50s, I don't I don't know they had any of that stuff. Maybe that was there, but not not widely available. I don't think. This is the the setup that like New York City police and people carry. You know, lead 158 grain round nose lead bullets in a 38 special, and you know this pistol or a Colt just like it. You know, for I guess decades, you know, decades, and uh, you know we argue about stopping power and all that. You know, till we're till we're blue in the face, don't we? So good old 38 special, boom. Oh yeah, how about a gong hit with it? See if I can get over here and hit that thing. Oh yeah, I need to get this gun out more often. Yeah, sweet. Mr. Cowboy, you need a slug. Oh, yeah. Those sights are right on. Uh, I have adjusted the sights really, really well. I've had this for a few years. It's, it's given me time to get the sights adjusted. See, you can tell, right? I got all the screws turned. <laughs> That's a joke, new folks. Okay. These are totally unadjustable, so it's a good thing they're right on. So anyway, that would have been a, a, a very viable choice. Other guns, of course, and people will write. I can hear you typing on your keyboard right now. I'd have chosen the 1911, you know, or other firearms, or a 44 Special, or, you know, different things. Well, that's fine, yeah. Hypothetical person two might have chosen that, right? This is just a possible uh, uh, selection. What somebody driving a 1954 Chrysler <laughs> a New Yorker might have carried, right? Okay. All right. Now the rifle. Oh yes. Good old model set. Well, I didn't. If I didn't say the Model 10, this this pistol, these 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 revolvers go back to 1899, I think. You know, eight, you know, long in there. And so again, been around forever. Been around forever. Model 70, I think 1936. So this would have been a. Uh, a a likely choice as a rifle for somebody in the 50s because it was the choice for a lot of people hunters and, and whatever because it was known as the rifleman's rifle you've seen our video on it i hope or two this one was actually made in 1940 it's an old pre-war uh model and uh, i need to shoot it again don't i so pretty pretty nice uh definitely link to the video on uh, some of these always look at the description and I usually pin them in the comment too when I do that 30 out 6 uh, this is what the uh, model 70 came out in and just a sweet rifle yeah I mean basically everybody likes a model 70 you might have a rifle you like a little better you might never have even owned one because I didn't for a long time but it's really really hard to beat and that was widely known by the 50s so you know, if somebody was shopping for a, I just want a good, hard-hitting hunting rifle, or whatever. Uh, I guess that could have been in uh, uh, police work or whatever, some game management uh, position or whatever. And you know, the Model 70 would have come to mind. Okay, no doubt about it. So, let's see if I can hit anything with it. All right, keep those sights. I forget how to sight it, but. Okay, just right there. Okay, I think there's one low. Gotta get it up on the target. Yeah, right there. All right, nice. Look at that other one. Well, that was dancing. I knew I was going low. Why'd you let me pull the trigger? I didn't know I was going low that time, but I was holding a little bit too low. 
Uh, I wish y'all would do a better job of letting me know when I've got my sights on the target or not, or if I'm not holding high enough. So yeah, the, the Model 70, this would have been a real, I guess of the three firearms this person chose, this, this is uh, the Cadillac that he or she chose, right? The Model 70, really nice rifle. I'm gonna hold up a little higher on that left plate and pop him. That smart Alec. Yeah, what I tell you? And I'm gonna put the rest of them on the gong just to be mean. Oh no, I've got a cinder block down here. I forgot to tell you, it's on that uh, stand there to the left, down there, under that little bitty ram. I'm gonna see if I can hit him. <laughs> I think I did. Now let's go to the gong. Ooh. The last one up there. <laughs> it's hard. 30 out six. Hard to beat. Beautiful rifle, and uh, I really am impressed with this fellow's or this gal. It's probably a fellow, but it could be a gal. I'm very impressed with uh, with the the rifle choice that they made because uh, that's a nice one. I'm impressed with all their choices. These are all fine guns. Remember, it's the 50s. They're just not. Uh, oriented to polymer handguns and high capacity and all that kind of thing uh, the guy or gal carrying this model 10 I guarantee you it did not cross his mind very much at all if ever that he was operating with low capacity you know with the rifle the handgun and maybe even the shotgun did not think much about the capacity it just wasn't as big an issue back then uh, people were not as tough you know uh, they'd go down with just the two or three shots yeah that was a joke that was a joke so anyway uh, those are three viable choices yeah I, I wouldn't uh, give this person a hard time and call them dumb or anything you might so 1954 if you know anything about that time period uh you know chime in what do you think you would have chosen if you had been alive then and old enough to buy guns i think one of my choices in 54 i was telling john i think was a fanner 50. some of you older folks know what i'm talking about i had a fanner 50 and uh it was an interesting choice but not one that police would have chosen or uh fbi or anybody like that so 38 special for the handgun model 10 you could do a lot worse than that you could definitely do a lot worse on a rifle model 70 you almost couldn't do better and then on a double barrel yeah maybe you think a pump gun would be a better choice or semi-automatic yeah john browning had his a5 out at that time there are lots of other choices but uh this person was into reliability and just a good old sure two shots right so anyway uh take that for what it's worth uh probably what you paid for it right so Three possible choices that, that you could have made, or someone could have made, probably did make in 1954. And hopefully they didn't choose that junker old car over there, John's, right? <laughs> Life is good. Well, all right. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water-soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.